Hello guys, um, so we want to finish off this part of uh, our lessons with uh, compositional functions. Okay, so given two functions, you can, you can compose them. Alright, what do you mean by that? Okay, so suppose that you have two functions, um, g, let's say, g takes elements from, um, from x to y, and you have another function f, f takes elements from y to, uh, to z, alright? So, uh, I like to sketch these things, so g takes elements from here to y, that is g. Y must take elements from here, all right, from the range of uh, G. So um, the domain of F is the range of G, all right? So it takes elements from this to uh, the set Z, all right? And that is F, okay? So given an element here, X, G takes X um, from here and gives you Y gives you g of x, all right? And then f takes element from the set y, so f will take this guy up, and then gets here, it will give you f of whatever is here, this is g of x, okay? So this final result is called the composition of f and g, f of g, written as f, f, of g of x, which is equal to f g of x. All right. So g takes x from its domain. It gives you g of x in its range. F picks element from the range of g. It picks this guy up, and then it gives you f of g of x. Okay. This final bit results is what is said to be the composition of the functions g and f or f and g okay uh, remember they are not the same f of g is not necessarily the same as g of f okay if they are equal then the two functions are inverses of each other okay you can talk about that later good so that is the composition of uh, functions so for two functions um, to be composable you expect that the domain of one, uh, the range of one is the domain of the other. All right, like this. Good. So how do you find, given two functions, how do you find their uh, composition? Okay. Now, before we do that, we'll do some uh, examples. Um, note that this final bit is like a new function, right? So this thing here is, is like some new function at each, which is, this compose um, this uh, new function that we have. So h, the new function is f of g of s, x. So it's as though give me x, give me x, and I'll give you boom, and I'll give you this guy. All right. So the new function, the composition, okay, says give me x. And then I will give you f of g of x. So the composite function, if you like, is a new function, h from x to straight to z. Yeah? From here to the set z. So that's this new function here. All right? So that is a, a composite, composite function or the composition of uh, functions. So let's do uh, uh, maybe two examples of this. So we want to uh, compose, well, uh, let let g of s be two x squared, and then let f of x be three x minus two. Okay. In the second case, we are going to let g of x be x cubed, and we'll let f of x be x x raised to the power one. Alright, good. So now um, let's do um, f of g for the first one. Okay, 
okay, f of g of x is equal to f of We know g of x, g of x is 2x squared, so this is 2x squared. This says, take, take the function f, wherever you see x, replace it with this expression. So f is this, so wherever I see x, I'm going to replace it with 2x squared. Okay, so that will be equal to 3 times x, but x now is this, minus 2. Okay, so expand this, and I get 6x squared minus 2. So that is the composition. So the composition of this and this gives us that. Alright? Um, again, they are not necessarily the same, so let's try the other way. Let's find, let's find um, g of f. What do we get? This will be g of uh, x, right? And that is g, f of x is in by this, 3x minus 2. This says that take the function g, wherever I see x, I replace it with this guy, 3x minus 2. So I'm going to have 2, x now is 3x minus 2 squared. So this gives me 2, I'm going to square this guy, so that is 9x squared minus 2 times this is 6, that is 12x squared of this is 4, multiply 2 by 2, I have 18x squared, 3d4x, and then 8. So you see, g of f of x is equal to this. Obviously, this is not equal to that. So you see that f of g is not necessarily equal to g of f. So they are not always equal. They could be, right? But they are not always equal. But that is how you find the um, composite function. Okay? Okay, let's finish off with the, um, with the last one. Uh, got rid of this. Okay, I'm going to leave this. Yeah. This is two. Okay. So we have we have <coughs> example two. So the same thing. Now I have now example two, our g of x is x cubed. So g is x cubed. Alright? So wherever I see x in the function f, I put in x cubed. Now f is this. So I'm going to have x to the power 3, all of that raised to the power 1 there. Okay? 3 times 1 over 3, the 3 cancels, you have 1, so this is just x. Okay? So f g of x is just the to x. Alright? Then let's also find g of s of x, and that will be equal to g into f of x. This is equal to g, f of x is x to the power of third. Alright, so take the function g of x, wherever I see x, I replace it with x to the power 1 over 3. And so I'm going to have x to the 1 over 3. And I will raise it to the power 3. Same way, 1 over 3 times 3 is 1. So I just have x to the power 1, which is x. So this is equal to x. So in this case, you see that f. Alright, so here we have f of g of x is equal to g. In this case, they are equal. Alright? This is equal to x, and that is also equal to x. Alright? But they are not always. Okay? Now, if they are equal, you can show that if um, the composite functions are equal, then this uh, one is the inverse of the other one. Okay? 
the inverse of this function is this and the inverse of that is this. Alright? Good. So that will bring us to the end of composition of functions. So that will end here. Um, the, next, the next topic we are going to start off is looking at dividing polynomials, right? And how to factorize polynomials, how to find um, the zeros and so on. Okay? So I'll be back.